This week for the primary painting lesson, we will be focusing on the non-objective piece. We are going to look and work with color, continue working with our lines, and with our shapes. So this week we are painting and before we begin our non-objective piece, we're going to specifically focus on color just a little bit more. I want to talk to you about the color wheel and look at this. We have our primary colors. These three colors make all the other colors that we would ever want or need. And then um, we have our secondary colors. Just a quick review, the blue and yellow makes green, the yellow and red makes orange, and the blue and red makes the purple violet. And when we are looking at the color wheel, we have our color families. I want to start with our warm colors, our warm colors are colors that make us think of actually what the name says, warmth. When we see the red, the orange, and the yellow, we think of fire, we think of maybe embers, we think of a warmth, sunlight. And um, so warm colors, in the same way, when we look at our cool colors, green, blue, and purple, then we think of nature and, and things around us that are cool. Um, maybe water flowing, maybe uh, green leaves on a bush, purple flowers blooming. So the cool colors. And then we have our complementary colors, colors that work well together on the color wheel. Green and red are across from each other on the wheel. Orange and blue and yellow and purple. These colors are always going to work well together. So you can place them beside each other and you know that the yellow is going to make the purple stand out just a little bit. I have not added any neutral colors. I actually have um, black and white, which uh, these colors are very important whenever you're adding them to a drawing, a collage, a painting, um, but they are considered neutral colors and I'm not gonna be focusing on them just yet. I have a couple of types of paint for you to explore with this week. The large group of paints that you can choose from the library are um, a specific brand and they are going to be translucent. Translucent means slightly see-through. So when you're looking at these colors that have already been pre-painted, you can see that there's a, a color. It is even maybe considered bold, but it, it slightly um, leaves a see-through idea. You can see the paper beneath it, maybe the coloration coming through. Um, it kind of reminds me of something that would be maybe watered down a little bit. So we have our warm colors in these translucent paints. And then we have our cool colors in the translucent paints. Um, something that I really, really like about these uh, paints that you're going to get is that the blending really is fun. You can um, still see the green that I had on my brush as I was moving on to this turquoise teal color. And so it's still translucent, slightly see-through, but um, you can see the color there. 
So in comparison to the translucent paints, you're also going to have provided for you um, tempera. In tempera, the tempera that I have uh, ordered is more opaque. So opaque means not see-through. So it's going to be a bold, thick, a thick color. Um, it's going to cover everything. So whereas you see through these, when um, we add the opaque in just a minute, it is going to be full and rich of color. You can see it is um, much thicker and because of the thickness, it's going to take a longer time to dry. Okay, so in comparison, the two yellows, translucent, opaque. Okay, I'm gonna take my orange once again. Much more thick, rich, bold color. And the same for the red. The opaque tempera colors are going to take longer to dry. The transparent ones will dry very quickly. Okay, and then let's move on to the cool colors. Starting with our green. And then our purple. Now that we understand the difference between the paints, let's take a moment to talk about um, our brushes and our water. Let's review for just a few moments how to take care of our painting supplies. When we are using our brushes that the library has purchased for us, we need to take care of them because we're probably going to need them again later this summer. So let's take a few moments to figure out how to clean them properly. The first thing you're going to do is ask your loved one for a cup that is usable um, to wash out of. Don't just go to the kitchen and choose anything you want. Make sure it's something that your loved one is okay with you using because they're, um, a film kind of is created and left. And so if it's a cup that your loved one likes to use um, for drinking out of, that's probably not the best idea. I'm using an art cup. Um, 
So when we are painting, we are using only the tip of our brush, okay? If you can see that. I'm only placing paint on the tip of my brush. If it's at the top, you know that you've loaded too much paint. If it's on the silver, you have loaded way too much paint. And if it's up on the handle of your brush, you are completely probably having fun, but your paint is out of control. So you only want paint on the tip of your brush. And so when you are painting, uh, this is a good time for you to learn how to control your brush. It's a good time for you to uh, practice on how you hold your brush and how firm it is. And let's say that you start running out of color and um, maybe you're wanting to do that. Maybe this is the look you're going for, but maybe this is not and you need more color. You're just going to reload your brush. Just get more color and go back. And this is something that we'll review again whenever we um, paint with watercolors. So now I'm ready to move on to a new color. Um, if these are your paints and you're okay with um, just going to the next color, that's fine. The only problem is that once you dip a paintbrush that already has paint on it, then the new color is going to be contaminated. So for um, the purposes of keeping our paints long lasting so that we can use them time and time again, also um, so that we don't ruin the paint colors for maybe someone else in our family that might be uh, painting or wanting to do the same thing, we really need to wash our brush. So we're going to take our brush and put it into our water. That's all you need is water. And then you're going to come to the edge of your cup and you're going to get all the excess or extra water off. And then you're going to come to your paper towel. If you are putting your brush on the paper towel and you can see color, then that tells you that your brush is not, um, it's not clean. So you need to keep trying to clean it. Notice that I'm just gently moving my brush along my paper towel. I'm not, um, I'm not squeezing it. I'm not pulling on it roughly. Um, these are camel hair brushes and the, the hairs will come out if you are being too rough. You always want to have a happy brush when you're painting. You'll know it's a happy brush if you have a brush that's coming to a point. Um, if you're painting and your brush is pushed down like so, you are pressing too hard. If you are painting and your brush is flattened and sprawled out, that also tells you that you are applying too much pressure. Um, look at this. this. This could be a way to apply paint for a special reason, but most of the time an artist is not going to want a paintbrush that is going to be all sprawled out or fuzzy. Um, a really easy way to fix this is just to dip it quickly, get the excess water off, and then softly bring it back to a point. So we are going to get started on our primary non-objective piece. Non-objective is just a really uh, fancy way of saying no pictures. So when you were creating with a non-objective uh, idea or um, focus, you're going to work with line and you're going to work with shape. You have to be very careful when you're starting to use shapes because the shapes do create pictures. But if we were to come back to this line and look right here, this is a good example 
of how lines and shapes can be used to create a non-objective piece. So you're working with lines and shapes and colors, and we're going to practice overlapping those this week. Overlapping means that we're going to place some on top of others, um, similar to this idea with the transparent paints or translucent paints. And so we're going to take our time on this piece. Maybe we're going to sit down and paint for five, seven, ten minutes, and then we're going to put it over to the side to dry. And then once it's dry, we're going to come back and do the next part. So this is uh, not only a lesson in color theory, lines and shapes, but also a lesson in patience. So the very first thing that I would like for you to do on an extra piece of paper, it could be a lined piece of paper that you've torn out of a notebook. It could be um, computer printer paper, um, or maybe you have some extra pieces that I've dropped off at the library. But we're just gonna take a few moments and we're going to get used to painting with the brushes that are provided. So choose one color and using your brush, I want you just to take a few moments to practice If your line runs out of color, you're going to just go back and re-dip. Practice creating lines, controlling your brush, making the brush and the color go where you're wanting it to go. Maybe trying a different kind of line. And we're not really worried about changing colors just yet because right now we're just worried about being able to hold our brush, re-dipping lightly, and then moving our brush around. So maybe take a few moments to do something like a zigzag. Once again, when you start losing your color, just re-dip. Try something a little more difficult, curving. Maybe you can curve your brush, or maybe you have to turn your paper. Maybe let's take a moment to clean the red off, dry it slightly, making sure there's no color left. And then let's move over to another part of our paper and let's try some shapes. This is something we did last week with our pencils and our crayons. Maybe you had color pencils. Maybe you tried the pastels. Learning how to um, curve your brush, learning how to move your brush with the paint on it. learning how to not push down hard. And 
maybe using size to show a difference between shapes. More than just how many sides a shape has, maybe also showing variants or differences with size. Maybe taking a moment to try to fill in a smaller area. So, so far I've been pretty geometric with my shapes. wash my brush again. Washing your brush can be a, another lesson in color theory. Started with blue, added my yellow, and now I have green. And I'm going to try with my orange tempera, maybe some organic shapes. So maybe some shapes that are more fluid and round that could be found in nature around us. And when we are making our shapes, whether they're geometric, geometric or organic, this is where our lines come together. We know that when two lines meet, a shape is made. So that's when two curvy lines meet then a shape is made. And maybe mine is similar to a piece of fruit you've seen before, or maybe it is a puddle that you jumped in recently. Maybe our organic shape is as simple as two slightly curved lines that meet at two ends like a leaf. Practice your lines, geometric and organic shapes, using your paintbrush and some paint. We have now practiced using our paintbrush and using our paints and now we're going to get started on our first piece, our primary non-objective piece. We're going to start with the translucent paints. I wanna show you an example before we move on to the real piece. This example was created with the translucent paints. And um, you can see how the colors are see-through even uh, the layering of a yellow on top of a red and then an orange. 
And so we're going to start with the translucent paints and then we will add the opaque tempera on top of that. When you add the opaque tempera on top of that, you can see as I'm adding it how thick it's going to be and what the color is going to look like. So whether you're adding a warm color on top of a warm color, you can see the difference between the translucent and the opaque. And it's going to be the same for other colors, like a complementary color on top of the orange, okay? This is exactly the reason why we're going to start with translucent and build up from there. So you've picked up your supplies for, from the public library. You have your translucent paints. There are um, color wheel families, the typical color wheel Grouping. I also have fluorescent colors um, in the translucents, and then the opaque temperas are just going to be the basic um, color wheel with the primary and secondary colors. Parents, you had an option of the sizes to pick. I have um, pre-treated the paper with a border so that we can keep the border edges clean. The smaller pieces are probably very good for um, two and three year olds that may not have as much of an attention span or their patience is not as um, developed yet. So you can have your small piece to do a non-objective with your little one. I have a medium sized piece that I've gotten ready for maybe a four, five year old. And then the larger pieces are available for maybe the um, five or six year old who is able to work with a larger surface and not be frustrated. So we're gonna start with our translucent paints and one of the tricks to not making muddy brown is to only work with one color family at a time. We discussed earlier the different color families and we're going to start with the warm colors first. So that means we're going to place them on the paper first and only use those colors. Then we're going to take a, a time where the paper is moved to the side to dry, and then we will come back for the next color family, and we will continue layering and adding as we go. So we're going to choose a color from the translucent warm. I'm going to start with my orange and just maybe at the top of my painting, um, my paper, I'm going to start. Remember, this is going to give color, but it is going to uh, be see-through. It is okay to get up on the blue tape or beside it. The tape is there for a border. We're creating that kind of border clean look once we're finished.
to my yellow and I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to my orange. If you're starting your non-objective piece, we're only trying to create lines and shapes and colors. Sometimes that's hard for little ones. They want to create stars or hearts. Sometimes sketching an idea before you begin helps. Right now, I'm just taking some time where I am using my color. To fill in some of this white background space. Now I'm going to move on to my red. I'm going to actually move to another part of my piece. I'm going to turn my paper so that my sometimes you can turn your hand and sometimes you just need to turn your paper. You have too much paint in one area, you just take your brush and move it around a little bit where you'd rather it be.
what lines or shapes have you used so far? So far I've just used large shapes. Ovals, half oval, hemisphere. Then an area where very similar to rectangle. Still only working with our warm colors. Okay, this is our non-objective piece so far. We're going to set our warm colors over to the side to let them dry. And in about 30 to 45 minutes, we can come back and um, start working with our cool colors. So we have set our piece aside for 30 to 45 minutes. And um, remember, we have added a paint tape border to keep our edges clean. And so that whenever we take it off at the end, um, we will have a white border around our non-objective piece. So we have already worked with our warm colors and now we are going to take some time to work with our cool colors. My shapes with the warm colors tended to be um, more geometric and so for my cool colors I'm going to take some time and um, maybe work with some more organic shapes. Remember we're only loading our brush on the tip and we can always always go back and reload the paint as needed.
After I make my scallops line with my paint, I'm going to go back and fill in the middle of that. We're still using the translucent and what is so much fun is that while it is wet, it's still going to mix really well. So I'm going to take a moment with this teal color and I'm going to come back and add some of that to the bottom of my blue and I can put my um, part of my hand down now that the red section of my painting is dry I have no worry about that getting smeared or smudged. And maybe as you're painting, if you're scared about getting close to another color as you're painting or you're worried about um, messing up your shape which is very hard to do especially whenever you're doing organic shapes but if you're worried about getting too close to another shape you could uh, leave some white background space around it or you can see here with mine, I have slightly overlapped with the red and you can see that when the red and the blue come together, they're starting to mix another color. And the red is dry, so the red is just having this blue teal on top of it. Okay, so I'm adding my cool colors and I'm working with more organic rounded um, shapes. We talked about those last week. And when I'm creating a non-objective, maybe I have an idea in my mind of where I'm headed. Maybe I have drawn something that I want to try to create with paint. Or maybe I am just having fun with color and lines and shapes. Maybe this is something that I've never tried before and I'm just trying to see what I can do and how I can use my brush.
So with my cool colors, my more organic shapes that I'm starting to add, I'm starting to fill in the space that I still have on my piece. And so I'm looking around and I'm looking to see where I can add the different colors. So as I'm going, you can see that I'm still using my cool colors from my cool family and that I'm starting to fill in the space. And what happens if I'm working in an area that <clears throat> is still wet? Well, if your brush picks up some of the color and you don't like that, just wash your brush. You can see that I've got some globs I'm having to thin out and move around on my paper <clears throat> because I've left my little cups uncovered. If you, if that bothers you, then keep your paint caps on until you're ready for that color. So I'm going to continue adding this violet almost a <clears throat> fuchsia to my background. And I'm going to pause right here because I feel like I need to fill in some of my other areas. So I'm going to stop for just a few moments. So I've taken some time with my cool colors 
and I have continued with my colorful, cool colored organic shapes and lines. And I think that in this area here, I would like to add some more of my warm colors. So while my cool colors are drying, I'm gonna take just a few moments to come back in this corner area. <clears throat> and continue with my yellow. Maybe your shapes are all over the place. Maybe you started with a really large shape in the middle of your painting and then you worked your way out. There is an endless way of creating a non-objective piece when you're just focusing on the color and lines and shapes that your brush is making. I've got my yellow that I wanted to add there. And my yellow is not as hard edged as originally. And now I'm gonna come back with this orange. I know that my orange and blue looks good together, so I'm gonna get my orange right up next to that blue. If you have chosen um, to have your shapes and they're not touching like mine are, that's fine. Maybe you have some shapes that are touching and maybe some shapes that aren't. Maybe you have some shapes that are big and some shapes that are little. You have varied your size. Notice what's happening as I'm coming with my warm over here and it's starting to touch the purple that I used during my cool colors. You're starting to see that a little bit and it's blending a little bit. Okay, I am going to let this piece dry once again um, for 30 to 45 minutes and congratulations, you just completed the second part of your non-objective piece. So we have taken some time to let our cool colors dry. We started with our warm colors, then we went back and did our cool colors. 
I needed another little section to go back and add more of the warm. So we've let that dry and now we're going to move on to our neutral. Our neutral areas, um, our colors are gonna be black and white and we're going to use these to add some details to what we've already created. So we have a translucent black and that is going to be more of a see-through whenever we're using it. If you are not steady with your brush and you are worried about this part of the piece, you can use black and white oil pastel. That would be a great way to add some of the lines back on top of our shapes that we've already created. You could also use crayons. Crayons would also work. Color pencil would be a thinner line, but color pencil would give you the same idea. And if you've done this painting over the week and you've gone slowly and you've taken your time and you've paused when you needed to pause, you've let your piece dry, then this part can be the same. Um, you do not have to do all of the sections in one sitting. You can go slowly. If you don't have an idea, you could do one section and then come back for the other one. So my black neutral line is covering up some of those areas that I overlapped on the color that I was concerned about at first. Notice that I'm turning my paper as I go. Um, I'm using my uh, side of my palm to steady my hand. If you're an older primary student, this is something that you could practice. If you're younger, maybe you want to, like I said, use one of the other. Tools. So I'm doing all my black lines first and then I'll switch over to my white. And I'm working primarily with straight lines right now. Some of my straight lines are vertical, some of them are horizontal. But just a little bit, we can start expressing ourselves with some different types of lines on top of these colors that we've created. So this is what we have so far.
gonna wash my brush not wanting to make gray and I'm gonna come back with white this white is um, translucent so I would really say for this part of the detail that we would want to have the opaque white. And I'm going to continue for a few moments adding some of these neutral details. Okay, so we are adding neutrals to our piece. I was not happy with my translucent white, so I've come back with a bolder opaque, and you can see the difference immediately between the two and we're gonna just add these curved line details to finish our piece I'm gonna turn my paper around And continue so I've created a rhythm and a pattern by going with the same white and green that I just finished down below and I'm gonna continue that same idea with the black that I have on certain parts and pieces. And when we add these neutral colors, it's just giving it a finished touch. It's going back and maybe giving some definition to where we were working or the shapes that we were creating earlier. So now we have our shapes from earlier outlined and now we're going to go back and add some details within the areas that we've already defined with our neutral. Think about repeating your lines, think about repeating some of the organic shapes or different things that you have already put on your paper.
pick it up every once in a while and see what you've created. See how you feel about it. Take a moment to look over it, see what you think. Maybe you need to let certain sections dry before you continue. So we've gone back and our final step was to add neutrals, our black and white. We have maybe outlined some of the different areas, maybe we've added some curved lined patterns, maybe some dashes, some longer lines to give our non-objective piece the final touch. Hope you've had a wonderful time and that you've enjoyed our exploration into color, lines, and shapes. When your painting is completely dry and you have completed your neutral details, really just basically more lines and shapes on top, overlapping what you've already done, then it's time to take off your outside edge. I have taped your paper so that the edges would be clean, they would stay clean, as you were creating. So now we can take our painter's tape. If you need help, you can always ask your loved one to help you. And just go from one side to the next. They're singular lines. They just look like they're connected. And for our final
And there you have your non-objective with color, lines, and shapes. I hope you enjoyed exploring color with me this week. Join me next week as we begin weaving.